we found the expression for a propagator of a free massive vector field. Here it is given as function of the momentum. If we want a propagator uh, as function of space-time, we need to do an inverse Fourier transform of this expression. With this expression we can now write the effective action for the free vector field. If we isolate the terms in x and in y, we see that we end up with uh, uh, the Fourier transform of the source in y and in the source in x. In fact, both expressions can be useful, that only depend on the form of the sources we are using for physical problems. As in the scalar case, we see that um, uh, the propagation uh, of a disturbance of the field is efficient when we have k squared equal m squared, or in other words, when a disturbance of the field propagates on mass shell, which is what we call a particle. As in the scalar case, we also use our sources uh, in order to perturb the field and to see how it responds. But our sources are now Lorentz 4 vectors, because they carry a uh, Lorentz index. In the case of electromagnetism, we know that what perturbs uh, the electromagnetic field are charges and currents. But we are not yet doing electromagnetism, because the vector field we uh, are considering now is massive, unlike the photon, which is massless. However, uh, the structure of the sources is the same for any vector field, and that is, we always have a time-like component, which is uh, like the charge density, and a space-like den component, which is a current density. In the case of electromagnetism, we are talking of electric charges, uh, but in in the case of other interactions, take for instance a weak interaction, we will have weak charges. So these charges we are talking about are general charges. They apply to any interactions mediated by a vector field. And one thing we know about charges, uh, thanks to Noether theorem, is that they are conserved. So we know that the conservation of charge uh, is expressed via the continuity equation. This means that the variation of the charge in a given small volume is equal to the flux of these charges through the surface uh, surrounding this volume. And in a, a covariant form, the continuity equation is simply del mu j mu equal to zero. And if I take the Fourier transform of this equation, the covariant derivative simply becomes i times the momentum, so the conservation of the charge implies that k mu j mu has to be equal to zero. And we can use this property to simplify the effective action because we recognize that we have k nu j nu, therefore this has to be equal to zero. Therefore I can get rid of uh, my term which has a division by m squared. And that means now that I can get rid of this term, I can safely take the limit where the mass goes to zero, which corresponds to electromagnetism with a massless photon. We can now simplify the expression for the effective action by acting the metric on the source. Note that we now have a plus sign because we have the product of two minus signs. Note also that I use the first expression, uh, which has sources as function of space-time, because the problem I would like to solve now uh, is what is the interaction energy produced by two sources acting on the field, two static sources acting on the field at some finite distance. And of course it is easier to characterize a static source, that is, a source which does not move in time, using a source expressed as function of space-time, rather than the source expressed as function of momentum. And as we choose the uh, inertial frame in which the sources are static, that means that they are not moving and therefore I have no current. And as we did in the scalar case, we will just consider our sources to be uh, delta functions, so acting only on one point of space on the field. Because the sources we choose only have a time-like component, that means we only keep the mu equal zero uh, term in the expression for the effective action. And we don't need to solve this equ 
equation, these integrals, because we already did it in the scalar case. The only difference uh, we had in the scalar case is that we had a minus sign in front of this integral. And what we got at that time was an attractive Yukawa interaction. But now, in the case of an interaction between sources mediated by a vector field, we have a plus sign in front of the effective action. And therefore, uh, what we will have is again a Yukawa interaction, but this time it will be repulsive. So this is a fundamental result that uh, two identical charges coupling to a scalar field feel an attraction, while when they are coupled to a vector field, uh, they feel a repulsion. And in particular, in the electromagnetic case, I just have to take the mass uh, going to zero. I get a repulsion in 1 over r. And of course, that's because I took two identical charges. What happens if I uh, consider different charges? So for instance, I attach to this delta function a charge q1 and q2, which could be different. So one could be positive and the other one could be negative. Well, if I track what happens to this charge in the calculation, I'll see that I end up with q1 times q2 divided by 4 pi r. So we just found the origin of the Coulomb interaction, which is uh, the interaction between static charges uh, mediated by a vector field, uh, which is massless. In other words, we found the origin of the force.